Hi, welcome uh, to my uh, Linux Mint 18.1 Cinnamon. This tutorial is about installing Arch Linux on Linux Mint. And we're gonna show you how to do that. Most of the movies have been made in VMware, so we're not in balance. This time I'm gonna make it in VirtualBox. All right, first things first, many questions go uh, are about themes and icons and so on. The wallpaper comes from Desktopper, do two piece without ER, but without with an R. And you can see I have the latest kernel and a special bash kind of look, but it's uh, not in place at this point of time, I think. Um, sorry, uh, the, the ZSH is not in place this time, and it's still a bash. And then the Arc Dark Crimson, which is a special one, it's red. And the Sadimono Unix Colora Vampire, which you can see here in the icons, how that looks. Okay, we're filming one screen, and the other screen has my codes I have to type in for the Arch Linux installation. All right, let's uh, go ahead and start Oracle virtual box and then tell the system look guys this is going to be an Arch Linux system the thing is I don't give it a name it could be Arch Linux GNOME it could be Arch Linux uh, Plasma it could be Mate it could be Cinnamon it could be anything i3 stuff like that so it's just Arch Linux I intend to copy paste then this virtual box and install the rest of the things i3 Cinnamon whatever I need Next, I have 8 gigabytes. I'm gonna give half of it to the system. I have a virtual box dynamically allocated. I'm gonna take around 20, 25, 26. Okay, create. Three things you have to remember. You go to settings. Think about your system. How many processors does it have? If you have more, you just give them more and I don't seem to be able to at this point ah there it is so I'm gonna give four come on one more four CPUs to the system so half of it again half of it display a little bit low half of it and last thing one two and three I need something to boot from so I'm loading and uh, where is it? Arch Linux 2017-00 dual ISO, ISO, meaning I can also boot in 32 bits, which I'm not gonna. This is a 64. Everything is set. Three elements. Start. Let's minimalize this one. And this can be gone, this can be gone. So, like you see, I can get a 32 bits or a 64. I'm gonna go for the 64. We're going to make an uh, adjustment for you guys, scale factor to 100% so you can follow exactly what I'm typing. This can be gone as well. And there you go. You are now at Arch Linux, the login prompt or the terminal, and it's up to you now. And that's where Arch Linux gets difficult and why Antergos, Manjaro, Apricity and other Arch Linux based systems well are easier for the starters for the for the you know, the beginners in Linux that it's still a graphical system and that you're booting in a graphical system and this is it's up to you read the wiki analyze things um, check your hardware and all that kind of thing so I have my own specific hardware of course so uh, I'm gonna follow the process that I would follow on a normal, my normal computer, and we are actually, of course, in VirtualBox, but I'm typing exactly what I would type in a normal SSD kind of environment and uh, directly on the hardware. First off, I'm in a space of the world where I need other keys. This is QWERTY, I need AZERTY, otherwise, special keys will be difficult later so I'm gonna load keys and I'm gonna load the Latin one there you go again Latin one one 
that's it checking checking done that's the one now i can type i have an ssd sda so i am i'm going to divide it i'm gonna cut it into pieces a little pie i'm gonna cut it into parts i'm gonna tell them i'm still on an old machine with no gpt but dos make me a new one and how much am i gonna give i'm gonna give it 20 the root is gonna get 20 gigabytes it's primary it should be bootable and the rest of the free space is gonna be primary and then type is gonna be swap and that's it basically i'm done yeah I'm checking mm -hmm. all right all right do you want to write it yes enter quit yeah quit and we're done we're off now we can go and check um, all the rest meaning i have to format these partitions so I, I took a pizza or a pie and i cut it in two pieces and i'm, I'm gonna draw some lines on it formatting and i'm gonna tell it's an x4 so make a file system please which file system lot of choices it's up to you i'm gonna use form which part of the pie do you want to format this is the part that's uh, gonna be my root and the other part is gonna be something special it's gonna be a swap and which part of the pie is that is this one and in order to use the swap you have to put it on swap on device sda2 enter ah we've started to be able to write something to something we to the parts and eh, to the pieces we should mount the device and which one do i want to mount i want to mount the sda1 and where should i mount it probably best to mount it in the directory called mt which is mount then i want everything to be downloaded to start the startup backstrap minus i and mount it backstrap minus i mount that's correct where to put it and then base base development and this is already spectacular as you will see 851 megabytes is being downloaded at a speed sometimes 55 megabits per second 23 megabits per second so that's uh, what i admire in arch linux fast servers if you have to upload download upgrades anything going to the servers it's gonna be efficient fast when you make tutorials you can only appreciate that installing the system is quite fast this is the latest kernel can we see it already four point pop 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 it's gone again it's so fast but we'll find it later what kernel it's uh, they are going to install ah 4.9.6-1 4.9.6-1 one moment okay next up jms f s jms tab minus u I'm gonna put it in the place where it should be. Now we know what partitions there are. Then let's arch root into our newly created computer. And let's use, or continue to use the bash. So we're somewhere else now, as you can see. The, the root is no longer red then we're gonna go next to nano etc locale dot gen if you're an american you don't need to change anything i suppose but i do i need to change that i'm from belgium 
and as you can see English US where is it this one oh, it's not so you can do it like this English US I thought it was submitted no no we should do something okay then we save it control X yes right that's done we have changed the locale and then we're gonna run locale generate it please locale gen and there we go generate it next up is some language configurations for me and as well for you I suppose echo lang let me check if I'm not mistaken nope next up is this one is equals to we're gonna use the us dot utf minus eight and we're gonna tell them write it to this little file that's that then exporting it to the same variable uh, line en underscore us dot ut uh, minus eight checking for typos check enter and then the nano etc the v console let's change that as well dot conf it's empty but it will be no not be empty no longer and we're gonna say look guy i have this special keyboard and after some experimentations a few years ago i found that the, this type of font pleases me the most in terminals so checking for typos again fine Control c yes enter next up yeah, there is uh, with which each uh, Arch Linux installation things change. You'll see the wiki change. If you do a copy paste, then you'll notice that stuff changes. Things get omitted, um, turned around in uh, in numbering. Uh, first this, first that. And what I've noticed now is that we have a file. So they have added this. Now, being not in UTC zero, uh, when you continue installation, then the time is off. Of course, you can install it, of, uh, change it in your desktop system, which you choose then later, or you just can say, whatever, I'm gonna delete it now already, and put it straight, put it right, like so. And you say, I'm not living there, I'm actually living in Europe in Brussels and oops wrong and then where should it point to etc local time and now we have a link from that folder so the first thing is the source where you, where you will want to point to and the other one the local time is actually a link pointing to the user share zone info Europe Brussels it's a bit thinking well is the way it works and then let's put our clock correct this I really need to just type we know what it stands for UTC enter doesn't matter and now, what is our computer called I like to call my Eric much Eric and I'm gonna put it in the file so the computer knows what name it is and nano etc hosts if somebody else wants to contact me over the internet over your network at home then you can give it your special name and it'll pop up with that name yes safe no tricks why and uh, something uh, different than in the wiki I at this point in time I already install the network manager we don't have to have capital letter for that 
network manager it's 80 extra megabits which is going to provide constant internet connection whatever I do so having installed that I have to enable it and I tell to the system look I um, enable it enable and now it's a bit tricky you have to write capital network manager and then everything is done create the sim link and all that just check the text but we have will will have internet when we reboot that's the main point and then it's not necessary to start at this time uh, system control start not necessary so not doing it then this one this command uh, nope didn't forget anything this command minus p Linux blah 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 4.9.6 again you can see the version okay waiting for it and there we are let's put in our password 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 is the password for the root and then let's try to reboot but before we reboot we should make sure that our grub is installed in the wiki today january 2017 i saw they didn't add os prober again that's for uh, multiple uh, booting machines uh, windows and linux uh, install it or don't install it it doesn't matter i'm keeping it in and I'm following what I used to do. Now we're going to install the group. Group install and target is equals to i386 minus pc. Everything is important. Check for typos really because things go wrong there. And you have to make the group on SDA. Not one or two, no, just the SDA. Like I said, I'm really taking my time to check for typos. Okay. Looks good. And finished. No error reported. That's what you would like to see. Uh -huh. Almost there for a reboot. Grub. Make config minus o where should the output be to the boot and then we can tap but here i don't think i can tap here as well yeah i can cfg so i'm gonna overwrite a file that's already there and now grub knows what partitions i have and how to boot that being said we are still in another system so we have to unmount the device as the A1 uh, sorry you mount I always say unmount and untype it so you mount we exiting we are back at the, the red root and now we can go and exit why well, we don't exit already reboot it first reboot ah let's see what happens upon our first reboot Aha, uh -huh. we have a problem. Houston, Houston, we have a problem. So what we better do now, in uh, our in virtual box anyway, is to shut down everything. That's the easiest way to do. So trying to shut down, blah, 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 blah possible support, okay. Um, want to shut down anyway. Well, anyway, like this, power off. What I'm going to do is get rid of this ISO. There is an ISO inside here. So maybe we can click here as well. And we can say click out of it. If we run it now, we'll have a completely other screen. That's another screen. That's group loading. And this is me clicking on the line. Let's get rid of all these things. And yes, we don't have a desktop environment yet, that's normal. So I 
do tend to call this phase two for uh, tutorial reasons. So phase one is passed. Phase two is we log in again as root and as part of the password we've just typed. And now we can't stay in root, so we have to make an account. So user add minus m, we're gonna put them in the group users minus g. Oops, well, important for the typos. Huh? Use user add minus m g user g wheel comma storage comma no spaces power minus s bin bash eric that's my name group does not exist what did i type wrong space no space let's try again voila as you can see it's important to check the typos password from eric is going in voila password updated successfully and now we're gonna change some stuff we want to be able to be changing and installing stuff so nano visto the suitors file down somewhere down 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 here we can uncomment and we're looking for wheel all all this one i guess uncommon to allow all members maybe one up no so uncommon to allow members of a group wheel we are member of the group wheel to execute any command and it is this one we're gonna be needing x yes right okay then i'm gonna check something if it is installed or not because I want it to have it so if it's maybe it's already installed bash completion I want to be able to read to complete my uh, codes commands with the tab so as you can see total download size and total install size we're not going to uh, reinstall it is going to be installed it was not installed now I like to have the Pacman minus s bash completion right now already we're still root we want to exit phase three we want to uh, log back in as eric and now we are in phase three almost done here we we could do several stuff we and i tend to do this to install git if it's not already installed no git is not installed so i want to install sudo pacman minus s git and as you can see i have internet i can download and i can log in everything works so now i can and that's my way of working to be fast up and running and to be able to build upon uh, knowledge of the path I make scripts on my github I'm gonna use a github a good clone and then just as an example then I'm round the I stop the, the video and then you type out of my head no problem to remember that and then my name and then anything I want to do I, I can install arch budgie I can install our gnome I can install anything really all these githubs exist and they have scripts and I start running script 1 script 2 script 3 script 4 and so on and everything is going to be installed so for me the installation here is done what we'll need now is xorg to install via the scripts and then a choice a gnome a budgie an i3 and so on okay I hope this tutorial helped you.